Fair of Victoria, probably the centrepiece of the Fair of Victoria this year was actually about tackling disability. So there was a whole range of initiatives that are outlined there. I think some of them are probably up on the policy on the internet. Uh, there was a um, range of things there in terms of equipment. Um, housing design, by the way, as you know, we've also made some commitments there. And this has been a, a challenging issue, quite a vexed issue. Um, you know, we've had um, a lot of interest and, and probably a bit of opposition from some of the um, housing and construction organisations, but we've um, uh, taken the right decision, I think, the tough decision on this, to make sure that houses that are built in the future are designed properly, and anybody who's had older parents would know about this. You know, you can't get a wheelchair into the shower because it won't fit through the door of the bathroom and all of those things. So we're going to have to make sure that all of the houses that are built in the future are properly designed. So we've taken those steps as well. Yes. And in terms of supporting um, accommodation for people with a disability, I think there were 25 new homes in residential in Melbourne and 25 in country areas. And again, part of that policy, which is up on the net, which I released in a fair evic. Mm. But it's quite, I, I would say it's a strong commitment. I know in this area there's always a lot more people would want us to do. I know that. Um, but it's, I, you know, I think we've made progress. We've doubled funding in a range of areas. Um, this is a, a further good step forward, but I know in this area there's always more to do. Yes, yeah. Um, well, certainly um, the accessible housing yep. um, uh, regulating that um, through the building permit system is has been warmly appreciated um, mm. because that's been a long a long running issue. Yep, and that'll start from the 1st of May 2012. So mm. so there's a little bit of a lead in for the industry there, uh, but that'll start and, and by the way, that'll lead Australia because the national arrangements are completely voluntary. And this isn't this will apply to all of those new houses that are built in Victoria. Yes. So it's a good step forward. It is a good step. Um, now how much time have we got? Have we got a couple more minutes? Yeah, yeah, we'll keep going. A couple yeah. more questions. Um, so um, one of the ones which um, I hadn't asked before, um, we were running through them. Um, this was really around cost as a barrier to participation in school. So this was uh, um, from SA Bond and Fitzroy. Um, just uh, went back a couple. Um, now it's also relating to the Year 9 experience, um, so relating to announcements around the CAMP program for Year 9 students. However, research reports from organisations such as the Brotherhood indicate that children are missing out on basics like school books, uniform and equipment due to the cost. Some parents keep their kids home because they can't afford to send them on camps and excursions. Uh, while the state education maintenance allowance does provide help, the reality is that many children are excluded from participating fully at school due to the cost. Um, so where families can't afford to, to send their children on, on activities, setting aside the Year 9 uh, commitment, um, if re-elected, what new measures would you implement to ensure that cost ceases to be a barrier to participation in school education? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've we, we've tried to set this right, I think, with the Year 9 program that we announced, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment, but bear in mind with schools, we provide uh, the education maintenance allowance, as you mentioned, which we doubled, Kath, I think about five years ago, uh, and of course we introduced to the school start uh, bonus, which uh, is, I think, $300 per family uh, at, uh, at prep and then starting secondary school. So we've We've tried to assist uh, with parents in providing that assistance. The federal government, of course, as part of the election campaign, the Gillard government is, um, has also announced further tax benefits that will be available to families under, I think, I think from memory, it's the Part A arrangements, and they will start next year. So all of those things will help families. But um, I'm very aware that for some families, they can't afford to go on a major camp or an excursion, and that's we try and help families with that through the EMA. Um, the beauty of the announcements that we announced that we made earlier this week is that there's essentially two thousand dollars per student in year nine. That obviously is all paid to the school, but that's fully costed. So it's not relying on a parent to contribute. That's yes. the additional cost of running that program for the term and the two week out of school taking into account the extra costs. So I, I can't promise to fix up 
if you like, all of the legacy issues that have built up over decades and decades, but I can say with the new programs going forward that there would be no call and no need to call on families to supplement mm. those programs, that they will fully achieve the goals mm. we've set out. Would you consider something like textbook rental schemes or, or other sorts of um, um, we've, pieces? We've, yeah, we've had, had a good, we've had a good look at this uh, and you know all our kids have gone through school and so we've been through all this, so every year you go and you, you've had three, three kids in a row and they all study um, economics and each year the textbook's different yep. and, you, and they cost a lot of money and there's not a big, um, you know, you don't get much for the second hand ones either um, when, you, when you sell your book back. So this is a big issue. I, I'd like to see, this is a big issue, I, I'd like to see more class sets. I was always a big believer in yeah. class sets. Obviously the internet makes a big difference yeah. as well, you know, so a lot of those things are now just available without having to physically purchase the book. Um, but I think in many ways they're probably decisions for schools themselves to make, but I would personally, you know, if I was running a school, I would, as the principal, I would like to see more class sets that are available so that the burden is taken off parents and those books are available for students whenever they want them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so just going, given we'll need to finish in a minute, I think. Um, so there's a question about whether a fairer Victoria policy framework has an impact and it's a big investment, can you justify it to taxpayers? And I guess my part of that question is, um, you know, what are the criteria? How do you really decide if there's lots of compelling proposals in, you know, and you're considering them in Cabinet, how, yeah. what are the criteria by which you, you know, you allocate resources to, to one over another and, and, and justify that spending? Yeah. So it's a, it's a good question. I guess the, the key element of a fair Victoria is really, um, it's trying to break down the silos across yeah. government and it's trying to work out what policies and programs are really gonna make a difference. That's what it's all about. And uh, you know the way government used to work in the past and all of these things that come in. We go through a budget process every year. Sometimes we'll have two or 3,000 different bids. You know, because ministers are doing their job and yeah. everybody who, gets in their ear and tells them this is a good idea, they put that up and you just have thousands of bids. And then you've got to try and say, well, you know, we do that and that and that, you know, is that going to make a difference? So what we do with the Fair of Victoria, chaired in the first, was when we first introduced it by John Thwaites and then subsequently by Rob Holes, we have all of the cabinet ministers in all of those social policy areas and they've got to determine holistically, if you like, across government, what are the things we can do and link up to make a difference? And I think it's been the best thing we've done in government. Like I, I, I just believe that absolutely. Yeah. And so people say, oh, is the money worth it and things like that. The money, the money's a great investment. It's an investment in the future of our state. It's the investment in young people. It's the investment in making a difference. That's what it's all about. And so I don't think we would have ever got the concerted approach, for example, on early intervention and early childhood development, had we not had a fair Victoria, I think we would have had little bits of piecemeal from all around the place, and the health department, the education department, and community development, they would have done their thing. Would they have ever come together in a holistic way? Um, I don't believe that they would have to anywhere near the same degree. So it's, it's about a single focus, bringing things together, in areas that will make a difference. And I repeat, as I said before, some examples of that, I think neighbourhood renewal, again, much bigger than just one department. You know, it involves, involves police being involved, it's got education being involved, it's got community development, it's got community services, they're all in there. What are the goals to lift the, um, the outcomes uh, for families in those areas to give every child improved opportunities and to tackle some long established problems like poverty, you know, that just continues. And so um, that's how it works, but I think the single test would be, uh, is it going to make a difference? That's, that's the single test, that's the best way I could describe it, I guess. Mm. So in terms of um, a message or, or something for our members who are watching, mm. who are watching this, a, a whole lot of questions didn't get up, so um, you know, for, for many of the people who've written in questions from the family violence sector or from, or from the carers community, um, is part of your message here that by bounding together and creating some big propositions that are, that are well organised in a, in a partnership sort of way, that that's going to that's gonna get a better listening from the government? What's the message out to our members about 
how to get money out of a really yeah, think that's a, government. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a good summary, and and uh, uh, I think you know with VCOS itself and the and the discussions we've had over the years, it's 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 good to have all of the propositions there about what you could do, but at some stage we've got to bring them together to say doing all of these things will make a fundamental difference for example in preschool education in lifting the outcomes of students there of intervening early to really make a difference so it's it's a matter of grouping them together and and doing that and that's what I would suggest and I think the same way Kath that within government we've had to get all of those ministers together and it's not easy for them because in a sense they're all competing, they all want things for their portfolio, but they've had to sit together and work out what is it in aggregate that's going to make the biggest difference. And so I think for all of the, 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 the community service sectors as well, getting together to say, well, what, what, is the, what is the big thing at the moment? You know, is it, is it, um, is it pressure on family budgets, for example? Um, is it pressure in the early years of schooling? Uh, is it the year nine and tens who are dropping out of the system? Where do we really need to focus? Is it homelessness? Is it family violence? Is it out of home care? So I think trying to get those priorities right and then, you know, I'm so keen then to work with the sector and say, yep, this is what we're going to do and we can have the best approach to early intervention in Australia or we can have the best approach to out of home care in Australia. And if we do that, we can try a few new things along the way too, some fresh thinking and some fresh ideas. So I would strongly recommend that. And again, the fundamental test is how we make a difference. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kat.